This week, we'll be going over all of the achievements on High on Life. There are 32 achievements in the game, and it takes about an average of 20 and a half hours to complete. As for the points that it's worth on achievement tracking websites, currently it's worth 39 points on ASTATS, 10,644 points on Steam Hunters, and 13,523 over on Metagamerscore. And a little bit of a uh, announcement, we got the merch store open for our first merch drop, so go check that out. It's all linked down below the video and the description. You can look at some of the icons and go ahead and pick some stuff up. And now, let's get to hunting. When it comes to 100%ing high on life, it is possible to do it all in one playthrough, but you do have a few missable achievements that are very easy to miss, as well as one that was bugged for a very long time and still has a little bit of a bug, but they did seem to fix it for the most part. So there's a chance that that one is still going to be bugged for you, but we do have a workaround that seems to allow you to get it anyway. We'll start going through the achievements throughout the game as you should be getting them and stopping to let you know when missable ones come up and we'll go over what all goes into those. That way you can complete the game much easier and faster than I did. First off, the big collectible achievement, Luglock's Genocide, you can wait to do until after you've completed the game. There are 227 Luglocks across all of the maps, including 5 that aren't marked anywhere. I've made videos going over all of the locations of them, which are linked in my High on Life playlist. The same goes for playing card to get for collecting every trading card in the game. There are 27 of these in the game, 25 of which you get from the Luglock's chests required from the previous achievement, so of course that means that you can wait until after you beat the game to worry about this one as well. For the last two, you do have to go to the pawn shop in Blim City to grab those for a little bit under 3,000 pesos. This one can be a little bit buggy when it comes to popping when you get the last card, so if it doesn't activate for you, just close out of the game, launch it back up, and it should pop as you get into your save. Now with all of that out of the way, we're ready to start our playthrough, and the first one that we'll get is Fallout Doesn't Let You Do This for Killing Slumsley. Starting out, you'll go through the game normally until you get access to the slums. You'll go down the access tunnel and eventually meet this little guy, Slumsley. Just shoot him to kill him for this achievement. We're starting it off right off the bat with a missable one, so make sure that you do this one. Then we can get Bring a Knife to a Gunfight for obtaining Knifey while on your way to the Nine Torque Bounty. You'll end up getting in this room, pick up Knifey, and you'll need to use him on these two guys. Our first opportunity to get We're All Very Impressed, Trust Me, for juggling an enemy in the air with at least 5 shots will also be in the slums. You'll need to use Kenny's glob shot on one of these big red ants or on a merc later on in the game, and then while they're in the air, shoot them 5 more times. Then, a little bit later on, you'll get First Bounty Down for defeating Ninetorg. This is your first bounty, and is required for the story. Then once you get back to your house, you can get Don't Knife the Hand That Feeds for taking Knifey's advice and stab Gene in the gut. He'll be asking you to let him do it for a little bit leading up to this, so when you do return to Gene, just take his advice and stab him. Now you'll have to choose between going for the Krubus or Douglas bounties in order to get our next achievement gunning for your job for using Sweezy to boss around the office Mopolis, you'll need to do the Douglas bounty first. After doing that one, you'll have Sweezy, and then while trying to find Krubus, you'll end up coming to this Moplet office. Have Sweezy equipped and tell the secretary that you're the new boss, and they'll believe you as long as Sweezy is out, and then you can have some fun telling the other Moplets what to do. Now going back to the process of getting Sweezy, we'll go get G3 graduation for defeating Douglas. This of course is required for the story, and will be after you defeat that trickster Douglas. Along with that, you'll also get Sweezy-like Sunday morning for obtaining Sweezy. Douglas uses Sweezy so you can grab that from his cold, dead tentacles. Around this time, you can also start working on Ice Cream You Scream for popping 20 grunt eyeballs. This wasn't counting for me for a while, but eventually started to somewhere around this point or after killing Krubus. Basically just shoot grunts in the eye to pop them out and eventually this will pop. And loosely related to that, I should probably point out the Mods Please Ban achievement. We won't actually be going over it just yet, but you should go into the challenge menu around this time to start checking which ones come available to you and work on them as you can. 
we'll actually go over it a little bit later with some tips on farming each one of the challenges. After your second bounty is done, you're going to want to start the process for A Starfish is Born for watching Globo's rise to fame. This seemed to be one that was super easy for people to miss from what I was seeing when going through the game as you really need to start it at this point or it could be missed. This is going to be a multi-part achievement that starts here by going over to the pawn shop and buying this drum. Then head over here basically right next to where you find Gene initially and talk to this dad and this stinky son Globo. He'll ask for the drum and then you have the first part of this done. From here on out, each of these steps will be done after you do a new bounty. So go do a story bounty, and before moving on to the next one, come back to this spot to see how Globo has progressed. So after you do a bounty and come back, he'll now have a crowd around him. Then do another bounty, and before continuing on, return here to find the dad alone, and he tells you that Globo has gone off to play his music. Then do another bounty, and after each one, keep returning to Blim City to see if any of the TVs are showing Globo as he's become a star. For me, this didn't actually happen until after I defeated Nipulon, and then it finally popped up for me on the TVs. Now again, we'll rewind back to when we had just done the Douglas bounty and work on Cold-Blooded Driller for defeating Krubus, so of course, just go through the story to get that one done. Then along with that, you'll get Satisfied Gustomer for obtaining Gus, Krubus was of course using Gus, and with him out of the way, somebody has to take Gus, right? Now with those two bounties done, you'll get Are You Packin' next as part of the story. You'll get into the waiting list for the jetpack, sleep, and then you'll get it. At this point, you can also get Carried Stan's Load to completion for, well, Carrying Stan's Load to completion at, at the end of the game with it inside of you or at least your inventory. So yeah, over here, if you go towards the pawn shop, you'll meet a strange little guy named Stan. He'll offer you a substance for free, and you just have to take it, and that's it. Then at the end of the game, you'll get the achievement. Kinda gross, but oh well. Moving on to the next bounty, we'll end up getting Creature Feature for obtaining Creature. While looking for the Scrindle Brothers, you'll end up in a lab where Creature can be found pick him up as part of the story for this achievement. Then a bit later you'll get Who's the Boss for defeating the Screndel Brothers. You have to fight them individually a few times, but eventually you fight all three at the same time, and then you get this achievement. You'll then go back to Blim City and go check out a store before getting Rip Davy Glutes for obtaining the Mag Boots. As you're leaving that store, you're gonna see this guy has died, and I mean, he's not gonna be using those sweet Mag Boots at this point, so why not just take them, right? Then we can go on to the next bounty and get Hardest Battle in the Game for defeating Dr. Giblets. You'll have to do some sleuthing to figure out where he went, which takes a little bit, but once you do, he'll put up one of the biggest fights there are. Okay, he actually just kind of kills himself, so it's super easy to do. Then, after returning to your house, you're going to be able to get eaten good in the neighborhood for paying your bill at Applebee's. You'll go there and order some food and drinks with Kenny. Then when you see Lizzie and have to chase them down, you'll get up to leave. But hold on, before you go, you'll need to look at the bill and pay it for this achievement. Now, if you made it this far, you've probably liked the guide up to this point. So I'll do the YouTuber thing and ask that you like the video, subscribe, and comment down below to let me know that you've made it this far. And if you want to go a step further, hit the join button below the video to join the member club for as little as 99 cents to help fund future video production. Now. Let's get back into it. Now at this point, we'll need to pause and start grinding out the most bugged out achievement in the game, Mods Please Ban, for unlocking every post in the Bounty Hunter forum. Basically, just go into the start menu, go over to forums, and then scroll down through the sections and posts to see which one you have left. They'll say complete once they're done, or we'll have a challenge listed if you have a challenge left to do. The reason we have to grind this out right before we go to Nipulon and finish out his bounty is because we have a few of these posts that will become impossible to do unless they patch it in the future. Specifically, the Hunk Kills and the Greeble Kill challenges, you'll be locked out of farming after you finish the game, so it's best to go ahead and grind these out now, rather than waiting until it's too late. Now, let's go over exactly how you can farm out each of these challenges 
for any of the discovering locations on maps challenges, you can actually wait to do those until after you are going for the Luglux collectibles, as those were going to take you to every location you need. Just make sure you grind out all of the other challenges before finishing the game to ensure that you don't get locked out of anything. So, going through those, discovering the three locations in downtown will be your house, the pawn shop, and Blordos. These are all going to be places that you go for the story, so you should get these naturally. Discovering the five locations in the slums you'll also do naturally throughout the story. These locations are the Laundromat District, Shanty District, Sludge Works, Slums Access Route, and Torg Territory. Discovering five hints about Dr. Gurgula will be in the following locations. In Blim City, you can go up here on the roof of Crust Lord near the entrance to the slums. There's going to be some graffiti on the wall here, just interact with that and activate this in. Over in Port Terrine, after you defeat Douglas, you'll use the pipe here to go to this area, and there's going to be a poster on the wall of him hugging Dr. Gurgula. If you miss this one when you go through here, you can still get to it through the pipes you escape from, it's just much more inconvenient than just grabbing it on your way through. Over on Zephyr Paradise, when you go into the lab, where you get Creature, you'll have to interact with this console to get into the weapons lab. This console over to the left of it will be another Gurgula hint. Also on Zephyr Paradise, you can grab two hints after you've defeated Dr. Giblets, go into his lab and interact with this table for one, then go over to the next room to interact with this console for the second in this area. Then for the final one, after you defeated Nipulon, you can go back into his office, and back here, you can interact with this console for the last hint. Now moving on to the combat tactics and strategies forum posts, we have 120 melee kills, which is self-explanatory. Just melee enemies a bunch until you get this one finished. I would just do this as you play the game normally. 480 gun kills, which you will get naturally, whether it's during the story or while you're grinding out these other posts. 480 enemy armor pierced is a weird one, but the easiest way to do this is to just run around meleeing mercs and grunts to break their armor and it'll consistently count towards this. 120 merc kills you'll get naturally while playing through the story. 120 melee merc kills you'll have to do a little bit of grinding to get done, but there's a pretty decent spot to grind this out by traveling to the outskirts and then running up here past these greebles and then up here where enemies start spawning. You'll want to grind these out until the two melee mercs spawn as well as any other enemies you're needing to grind and then load the last checkpoint to keep grinding. 60 execution kills you'll probably get while doing the melee kills. Basically just knock some of the armor off of enemies and then melee them and you'll get this little kill animation that'll count as an execution. 30 hunt kills are going to be one of the big ones that you can get locked out of for this achievement if you don't do it before beating the game. We'll go back to our farming spot on the outskirts for this one as well because there's one hunk that spawns as well as some other enemy types to grind. Then just load the last checkpoint and repeat until you hit 30. 60 Jason kills is another one that you're supposed to be able to grind after the game, but for me, I couldn't get any to spawn. So I guess if you're unlucky, maybe you get locked out from this one. But I did find a really good spot to grind this during Nipulon's bounty. Right after you start the fight in the human sucking area, you'll run out to fight waves of enemies. Pretty early on here, three Jasons are going to come out and you can shoot those, reload your last checkpoint, and keep repeating to farm this three at a time. 60 sniper kills you can pretty easily grind out also while farming your hunks and melee mercs at the same spot in the outskirts. I'd recommend just making sure that you also are killing the two snipers that spawn out on this platform as well as up here while farming this area. 240 interactable kills you could do the hard way of shooting interactables, sliding into enemies, etc. Or you can do this little trick with Creature. Basically just head over to Zephyr's Paradise Jungle Clearing and come over to the Clone Mulcher. Then use Creature to shoot his little baby spawns into the Mulcher and each one you shoot will count as an interactable kill. Then we can move on to Zephyr Paradise Challenges. 480 might kills is one that kind of sucks as it takes a while of grinding, but if you go to the upper valley and over here to this cave systems, you can farm out 20 or so at a time in here. Then just load the last checkpoint and keep repeating until you farm this one out. Discovering 8 named locations in the Zephyr jungle or deep jungle will be done naturally during the bounty for Krubus. These locations are the Bat Canyon, Deep Jungle, Fergal Warren, Lower River Canyon, Moplet Village, Mushroom River, 
River Fork, and Upper Falls. Discovering six locations in the Mines area, which is the Upper Valley, you'll get those while going for the Dr. Giblet's bounty, and those locations are the G3 Mine, the Administration Office, the Lower Valley, the Mine Outskirts, the Mine Shaft, and the Valley Bluff. Discover nine locations in the Screndel Labs, we'll be referring to the Jungle Clearing area. These you'll get while doing the Screndel Brothers bounty. These locations are the Laboratory Crossroads, Loading Dock, Sector A Hybridization, Sector B Cloning, Security Checkpoint, Screndel Pass, and the Specimen Holding. Buy six vendor items within Zephyr Paradise kind of sucks and can be also kind of buggy. This is the current major bug that kind of locks people out of it, but there is a workaround that was discovered for an invisible ball that does get around this. So first, you'll have to buy these two items from this guy down in the deep jungle area. Then in the mineshaft in the upper valley, you can go to this shop to buy two more items. This ball right here is going to be the key to making this challenge complete if you do end up having the bug. We'll go over that after the last shop location. The third vendor here is going to be in the jungle clearing right over here. He has three items that you can buy to go towards the six. And then there's a fourth vendor in the deep jungle near Dr. Giblet's lab. He's going to be down here and has three very expensive items. Now if you still have not gotten this challenge to complete after all of that, you can go back to our second vendor in the mineshaft of the upper valley area. And you remember that ball we saw earlier? Well, weirdly enough, there's some weird bug with that item that you're gonna need to make sure every enemy around is dead, and then go back up to him and look at that spot. If the ball isn't physically there, it should be invisible, but you still get the option to choose to buy it. So if you do that, it should complete that forum post. This is the one that almost got me when I did my second playthrough to get these done, until I found this workaround online. Then we can move on to the last section of forum post for Port Turin. 120 Greeble kills we can get from our same farming spot on the outskirts. Just instead of going over to the G3 spawns, you'll focus on the Greeble spawns right out here. Kill those, reload your checkpoint, and repeat until you get it. Discover three locations in the Old Town will be naturally done. These locations are Dregtown Elevator, Main Street, and the Old Town Gorge. Discover three locations in the outskirts, which are the GMS Schlooper Wreck, Outskirts, and Unidentified Wreckage. The last one being the only one that you won't naturally go to during the story, so if you're missing one, it's going to be that. Discover nine locations in Dregtown, which is another one that you'll naturally do during the story. These locations are Dregtown Cleft, Dregtown Plaza, Dregtown Station, G3 Recruitment Center, Maintenance Station B, Maintenance Station C, Thomas Michael Phillips Senior Memorial Court, and Vacant Lot. Buy three vendor items within Port Turin isn't nearly as bad as the one on Zephyr. The first vendor can be found by taking the lift down from Old Town over to Dregtown, and this vendor has one item. Then over in Dregtown, right before one of Douglas's pipe puzzles, you can grab another two items from this vendor. Whew, that is a lot of farming required for these challenges, and if that doesn't get you tired of this game, then finishing out the lug locks later on is bound to. Anyway, let's get back to the rest of the achievements. As you get up to Nipulon's office, you'll end up getting spent 15 hours at the Alien Strip Club for doing just that. How about an award? Here, take this one that says you spent all your in-game playtime at an Alien Strip Club. Oh, that's permanent, by the way. Okay, it's actually just one of his fourth wall breaking attacks that he kind of does where he attempts to embarrass you by giving you that achievement. Little did he know, we're actually achievement hunters and welcome our alien strip club achievement. Then you'll also get self-actualization for defeating Nipulon once you finally finish his fight. Of course, this is also required for the story. We can also get Let's Do It for obtaining Let's Do It. This will be after you get back from the Nipulon bounty after you return home and Gene will be done fixing up Let's Do It and making him at least sort of work again. He is a super powerful gun though, so enjoy the next few fights where you actually get to use him. Then you'll finally be able to go after Garmantuous and will get Steeri's rap on Pseudo for saying goodbye to Pseudo while you're making your way towards Garmantuous. This is just an automatic thing that happens as part of the story. Next, we'll be playing favorites for sacrificing a Gatlian other than Kenny during the fight with Garmantuous. 
At one point during the fight with him, you're gonna get the option to shove one of your guns inside of him to finish him off. And yes, I've got this censored because we need YouTube to actually monetize this video. Then shortly after that, you'll also get a legendary bounty hunter for defeating Garmantuous and taking down the G3 cartel. This is the achievement you get at the very end of the game for finishing the story. We do have a few achievements aside from the lug locks and card collectibles that I've left for after the main story. The first being, we paid for the rights to put a whole movie in here for discovering the movie theater. This can be done by using warp crystals to purchase warp bases from Blordos and grab the movie theater disc. Then just go there and sit down in the movie theater to start watching the movie. You won't want to stick around for too long though with these annoying people talking up front. That also leads us to seeing all the sites for unlocking and exploring every collectible warp base. That means you'll need to go to Blordos and purchase the Cutie Town, Movie Theater, Skate Park, Trolley Tracks, Toilet, and Quiet Cottage. That'll be 31 warp crystals that you'll need in total, and if you need to farm them you can go over to the jungle clearing portal and right over here to farm these warp crystals out from the bases that spawn. Then just keep repeating that until you have however many you need to buy all of these. You'll then need to go to each of those warp disc locations and do the special event there. So for Cutie Town, you'll need to stomp down all of the buildings. At the movie theater, you'll just need to watch the movie for a minute or two. At the skate park, you'll need to complete their challenge. At the trolley tracks, you'll need to choose one of the options. At the toilet, you'll need to complete their puzzle. And at the quiet cottage, you'll just need to break open the lug locks. Now we can move on to sequel bait for discovering Dr. Gurgula's hideout in the Human Haven as well as the secret ending for the game. You'll need to head over to Klug's office and grab the keycard from his desk. Then head over to the Human Haven and do some jetpacking to reach the top where we'll find a locked door that the keycard is going to open. Go through there until you find Klug who is then, well, killed by Dr. Gurgula. And you'll have both the achievement plus a secret ending to the game. Then we have epic legendary prize for sitting through the entirety of the really annoying countdown show on TV. This one requires that you find the rarest commercial on the TV in your house and then sit through the entire thing. The easiest thing to do here is set up the portal to go somewhere like Blim City and then see what commercial you get, go through the portal, return home, and check the commercial again. Then keep on repeating that until you finally find this commercial and sit through the entire annoying thing. And with that we have all of the achievements in High on Life, and now you should go through my other High on Life videos linked here for all of the Luglox locations.